Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. Mobile development in 2025. Would you go cross-platform or should you go native? There's a few things to look at and uh, we'll discuss it in this video. So what's my default? My default position vis-a-vis -vis building mobile apps, I'm talking about apps for your iPhone, for your Android device, Android tablets, etc., iPad, etc. My default, of course, when building a new app is to look at cross-platform solutions. It could, think, it could be things like Flutter, React Native, PWAs, and there are other solutions out there, like Xamarin was one that Microsoft had. Anyway, there's more. So my default, as a matter of just solid business practice, is to see if you can build it cross-platform. Why? Because when you build a mobile app, non-native, with a Flutter or React, etc., you have one code base to maintain. So it saves you a lot of money. But using a cross-platform solution is not all, it's not all a peaches and cream. There are things, issues that you have to contend with. Nothing is perfect in this world, right? Nothing is perfect. We have to, there's pros and cons to everything. So what are the pros or the cons rather of uh, using a React or a Flutter or a PWA, whatever, any cross-platform solution? Pros include, well, the cons rather include, uh, you may have limited access to hardware features with the cross-platform solution. So maybe like the gyrometer or something, um, perhaps Flutter doesn't support that. I'm not saying it doesn't, but, you know, for example. So when you're using a cross-platform solution like a Flutter or React, there may be some hardware features that you can only access via native programming. Another issue with the cross-platform solution is that there's going to be bugs. There's probably going to be bugs. Any software, no matter what, there's going to be bugs. So when you're using a middle layer, so you got your operating system, you got the iOS, you got the Android. When you're using a middle layer, like a Xamarin or a Flutter or a React Native, you got this layer of code. Coders make mistakes. There could be bugs you're going to have to contend with. That's just the part for the course. So when you're using a middle layer, when you're using a cross-platform solution, you have to expect bugs in the mix possibility. Another issue with uh, the uh, cross-platform solutions and non-native solutions is performance. Whenever, for every layer of code that you have, you have a hit in performance. And so when you're using a Flutter, you're using a React, it's never going to be as fast as writing native code. I'm not taking a shot, I'm not insulting Flutter, not insulting React, it's just normal. Many times, though, that doesn't really matter, right? If you have an app where, for example, if you wrote it, wrote it native, if you wrote it native, maybe something will take one-tenth of a second to respond, or one one-hundredth of a second, and maybe the Flutter version or the React native version will take you one-tenth of a second for a reaction to happen. So it's much slower. But as far as the user is concerned, they, meant they probably won't notice the difference. So that performance uh, loss, if you will, using a, uh, a platform like a Flutter or React or whatever, uh, it's, not, it's a non-issue in that situation. But maybe you're developing games where you need to access to, you need as direct access to the hardware on the phone or on the tablet, and you need as much power as possible because the game requires it, then a Flutter or React Native may not be your best choice. So as I touched on before, why would you go uh, a cross-platform solution? There's a few major advantages. Number one, you have one code base. As I said, one code base is a lot easier, a lot cheaper to maintain than uh, two. Because when you write native, you're probably going to have to write iOS and you're probably going to have to write Android. So that means you're going to have to have a bunch of nerds writing your iOS code. It's probably going to be Swift and a bunch of nerds writing your uh, Android code, which is probably, in 2025, Kotlin. You can do it in Java, just as you could use Objective-C in iOS development, but, but the move is towards the light, nimble languages, Kotlin and Swift, respectively. So, maintaining two code bases in two different technology stacks is expensive, right? You have to have different groups of developers, or at least one developer knows both, or maybe two different, you get the idea. It's just much more expensive. You get two code bases to maintain instead of one. As I just said, you need to have two sets of skills. You see, when you're dealing with any operating system, whether it be Android or iOS, 
they all have their little quirks. They have their, their idiosyncrasies. So you have to contend with that. One advantage of a middle layer, like a Flutter or a React, at least in theory, they will sometimes be able to mitigate for, to handle these little, these little uh, issues that you may have with the underlying operating system. So you don't have to worry about it as a developer. Again, this is a moving target. These things will change depending on uh, releases and so forth. But again, in theory, um, like jQuery, I'm going to go back to my web roots. jQuery is kind of like that in the sense where you were able to access the DOM regardless of browser using J jQuery, right? It, it hid the underlying inconsistencies from you. Um, Bootstrap. Bootstrap comes to mind as well. Bootstrap, the whole point of Bootstrap was to be able to easily create web layouts without having to worry about whether they were using uh, IE7 or, uh, or whatever, what was the new one, Edge or Firefox or Chrome or Safari. Uh, the Bootstrap framework would take care of these issues for you. It's not one-to-one, -one, it's not a perfect analogy, but you get the idea. Um, I got some notes here. So with the cross-platform solution, you have those advantages, but you also have one major disadvantage, I would argue, and that's the, the dependency on that framework. So if you write an app that's based on Xamarin, for example, then you're dependent on the Xamarin development team, in, and in that case, Xamarin was once controlled by Microsoft. So uh, I'll just read here. What happens if a new bug appears in the underlying OS, and then you might have to wait a while for the cross-platform layer to adjust for that. Or perhaps the underlying OS will release a new feature or a phone will have a new button or something. And so you're gonna to have to wait for the Xamarin developers, for the React Native developers, for the Flutter developer team to update uh, their respective frameworks to take advantage of the new button on the phone, as an example. So when you use a cross-platform solution, the last disadvantage uh, is that you have, you're dependent on them and you're dependent on their uh, update cycle and their development cycle. So when you're approaching a project, you have to look at, first of all, whether or not you can get by with one of these cross-platform solutions. As I said at the top of the video, if you're developing an app, an MVP, minimum viable product, your first time to market, you don't really know what the market's gonna need. So I always say go cheap and fast. And to me, that screams uh, cross-platform, React, Flutter, et cetera, React Native, rather. Now, you're going to have to evaluate this on a, on a project per project, project basis. Some projects, you, as I said, you may need a, uh, something about the hardware that you can't, re, can't get to with Flutter. You can't hit with PWAs. So that's an issue. That's an issue. A few months ago, I got on a conference call with a publicly traded company with their development team for their, uh, their mobile app. I'm not gonna say the name of the company. You know. One aspect of being a professional is to learn to keep your <laughs> anonymity, uh, being uh, uh, discreet about things is important. Anyway, so I got on a call with this, uh, their team, including the, the guy in charge of uh, their mobile development and, and other, not all, but a lot of their clients would use this mobile app. And they're not necessarily like a technology company per se, but it was a key aspect of their, uh, of their technology. Anyway, so the problem they were having, the reason I got on a call, is that their software, their mobile app is pretty buggy. And based on just using it and being a, an uber nerd that I am, having done this for decades, I knew that they were using middle layer. I said they, it had all the telltale signs of using a middle layer, meaning I assumed that they weren't writing native code because of the way the app was working, the way the update cycles were working. I could see that the, the underlying code base was fragile. I, you know, you do, you just do things for long enough, you start picking up on uh, little subtle signs that can tell you a lot about what's going on. Anyway, I got on the phone, not on the phone, I got on the Zoom call with these guys, with the team. I got on the phone call and yes, indeed, as I was suspected, they were using Xamarin, in fact, to build their app. 
And the problem that they were faced with was that Xamarin was no longer being supported by uh, Microsoft. That's one of, the, uh, one of the issues, one of the downsides of using any piece of software is when it stops being supported by the creator or the main community, you're in trouble. It's not a good thing. So that's, that's what their problem was. They had all these bugs, strange bugs happening. And a part of it is because the Xamarin it was buggy. And I think Microsoft dropped them, that's for sure. And I think maybe some other group took it over, but it's not the same. So they were faced with a very tough decision. And that tough decision is whether or not they stop investing time trying to get this Xamarin-based cross-platform mobile solution working, which is full bugs and they have to add new features on top of that, or to go native, right? And so they have data. So one of the pieces of data, I think it was 80% of the user base uses iOS, right? So that tells you where you can focus your development. So this, here's the thing, it's like, there's an old expression, don't put good money after bad. So for me, if I got a key piece of technology in my business that a lot of my clients depend on, and it's based on a platform that's now been uh, kicked to the curb by the creator, Microsoft, that's a major issue. For me, I would pull the trigger on a rewrite from scratch starting with iOS. That's what I, my advice to them was. I don't know what they're gonna do. They still have the problem. They have the problem. I had the same problem with Studio Web. Not that it was a mobile app, it was a web app, but we had to, I had to basically ditch the old, the old code base. It, had, it was very old. I think it was seven years old at that point or five years old. I forget what it was. It was pretty old. You know, old code bases, you get more and more bugs over time, especially when you're developing your MV, from MVP up. Because in the first few years that you take a product live, you're going to learn about a lot about the use cases. And when the clients are calling you up in a panic, I need this, I need this, I need this, and you, you write quick patches, you get it going, and then new feature requests, and next thing you know, you got Franken code walking around. And uh, yeah, so that's what they're faced with, this publicly traded company. They got an app based on Xamarin. Xamarin is discontinued. They're having to deal with Xamarin bugs. Mm, so they're, he was telling me he was been fighting with that decision. Do I go native? Do I rewrite from scratch? Big job rewriting from scratch. The good news though is when you rewrite from scratch, um, you already know the use case, right? At this point, I assume they earn several years into their application, so they understand what they need to do. So to copy and to rebuild from scratch is actually much less work than when you first build your application because you know what you need to do. So years ago when I did a rewrite on Studio Web, which is my learning SaaS, uh, lots of schools use it. I use it in my own mentoring program now. It automates the learning process, giving incredible outputs, outcomes. Anyway, what I did is when I made the, the decision I was going to do a rewrite, I got in a new engineer and I had him work on the old code base for about, I think it was six months, maybe a little longer because I wanted him to become very familiar with the old code base, understanding the problems, the bottlenecks, understanding how the information um, was flowing and so on. So that when, when, I, when we sat down to architect the new one, design the new databases, decide what frameworks we're gonna use, et cetera, and so forth, he had an intimate knowledge about how the app worked. So the new version, whenever you write new code, the new version had some new bugs, but the bugs were very tiny bugs, relatively speaking. And we were able to optimize processes that we hadn't been able to optimize in the old code base, because when the old code base was created, we didn't know exactly what the app was gonna do or what it needed to do. Now we do knew this intimately. Anyway, good thing I did the re rewrite. It's a far more solid code base and it works much better. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, so mobile development 2025, would you go cross-platform? I would make every attempt to do so, but you have to look at, at this on a per product basis. Does the middle layer, the Flutter, the React Native, does the PWA access of the hardware at a sufficient level for your needs? Uh, is it, despite the speed hit that you're gonna get, is it still fast enough for your app? It could very well be. You know, other thing, I won't re redo the whole video, but you get the idea. I know some very large companies, like this one publicly traded company and much larger companies I know of, that use cross-platform solutions all the time. So the big boys will use them. 
better to maintain one code base than to maintain two, right? All right, I hope you found this video useful. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in software development, coding, business, entrepreneurship. Everything I teach, by the way, is based on my real-world experience going back to the 1990s. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I, like, I don't like to say I've seen it all because you never see it all, but I've seen a lot. And so I, uh, I put out these videos to try to save you guys years and years and years, if not decades, of uh, research and you can learn from my experience, up to you if you want to or not. All right, if you have any questions, you let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give me uh, two thumbs down. One, two. If you like my hat, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the hat, you know how it is, give me two thumbs down. If you like my two camera action here, let me know. Camera one, camera two, and uh, that's it. Bye.